Hello, everybody, and welcome to the June 22nd Trips and Traps. Andy Serlin, Eric Donovan. Full slate of races to bring you this week. Six races all together, some dirt, some turf. So let's get started with race number two from June 14th. This race was actually off the turf at six furlongs, a claiming race for Phillies and Mares. Now listen, I don't know that Mar- Marvelous Margaret's going to necessarily win her next start, and this was kind of the day to have her. She was first time in a claiming race. But this was a question, a, a situation where, in my opinion, Rider error cost her the win, and Jose Lescano has ridden exceptionally well all year, and there's a situation where I think he made a bad choice. Yeah, I think so, too. Right here, the race is developing pretty well uh, in in front of Marvelous Margaret. You have a few speed horses out there uh, vying for the lead, and, you know, Lescano's making an aggressive move here to try to get right behind him and get down to the inside, which I really didn't get. He probably would have been okay where he was in about the three or four path. I, I completely agree, Eric, and I understand the concept of saving some ground, but, hey, it's not that important in Belmont. And second of all, when we've had a lot of rain here, there have been situations where the rail hasn't been the place to be. Now, this is the, first, the second race, the day of the rain, so there's no way of really knowing. Now, a horse did move up later in the day in the two-path and make a big rally, but in general, horses made outside runs. You see him steadying inside a horse is there. He gets in tight. She gets intimidated. She loses position. She tries to thread the needle. She's in tight again. She's never going to be happy doing this, and she could have been out here somewhere in the clear instead of down on the inside. Uh, just when, you know, just there at the top of the stretch when you're starting to get your momentum going to make the run, has to steady there and then has to, you know, try to re-rally and come up the inside so it's just not a move that works out particularly well and uh, just a, a tough way to to do it coming up the rail and you see the winner the winner had a wide trip and she was wide the whole way and she was the favorite but she won it easily on the outside and it just feels to me like it would have been a much different story of Mar- marvelous margarita on the outside now having said that who knows if next time what she'll do but i take a chance with her in the same field the next time at three to one no, i would too it does seem though that you're right it, this was the kind of the, the spot you want to have her in and uh and we'll see what happens next time out, where she ends up and who she faces and the price she is. We'll move on. Let's move on to race number eight from June 14th. And allow winners of one allowance, optional claimer for three-year-olds and upgoing six and a half furlongs. A big favorite here, Associates, going to be the winner. I was fairly impressed with the run spin-out made, though. I think this is a horse on the improve for next year. I don't disagree. This horse could be moving forward. I think you and I somewhat disagree about the race. I think the whole race changed because Associates in the back of the pack right now kind of broke slowly ends of the end. And uh, Associates should have won much more easily. And I think because of the trip in Associate, it looks like a more competitive race than it maybe would have been. I think you could be right there. Uh, you know, on paper, or not on paper, <laughs> on video, obviously, but uh, <laughs> when you look at it the first time, you say, well, you know, Spin Out did have a pretty good trip stalking right in behind the pace in here, but I think the way things kind of develop from this point on inside the half-mile pole change a little bit because Associates coming right outside of Spin Out here, and Ramon Dominguez is going to keep Spin Out pinned right. into the inside. I mean, this is what Ramon does best. He, 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 he subtracts the chances of other horses in the race, and he keeps uh, Spin Out pinned in. I agree. Now, we're trying to show you p- Spin Out on the inside. Associates right outside him, and watch him carefully as we hit the top of the stretch, because a lot of riders would have allowed Spin Out to get out, and I don't understand why they do this. Ramon, you can see him. He is keeping him in right there, and he shuts the door on him. That is just good race riding, and Spin Out's forced to make the move inside instead of getting that clear run outside. Now, you could say that there still was enough time for Spin Out to, to get going here, but it looks like right there, Rosie and Pravnik had to you know, cease riding for a second there because things were getting a little bit tight. He may not be the kind of horse that wants to come through on the inside anyway. I thought all in all the way the race you know unfolded, it just seemed like a tough kind of spot, especially seeing how Ramon Dominguez just kept her, you know, kept him inside the whole time. I think if he hadn't shut the door top of the stretch, Associate would have beaten him by a length on the outside mm-hmm. or three quarters of a length. It would have looked a little bit better. But I, but after that, he might have gotten a pretty good trip getting up in there. But I don't disagree with you. Spin out's a lightly raced horse that seems to be moving forward, and he's much more comfortable in sprints than he is trying to go longer. Okay, we'll move on to uh, race number six now from June 15th. We're going a mile and a 16th on the Widener turf course here, made in claiming race for three-year-olds and up. Let's take a look at Grandpa Len. Yeah, the first thing we'll show you is why the horse has trouble at the start. As we break and you look at him in yellow, the other horses just come over and they force him all the way in. He actually ends up inside of the horse who broke from the rail. And it's amazing how much more you see from watching these head-ons than you could see watching the start. Because while you'll see him breaking like a length slowly here and you see him back there, he's very easy to pick out with the yellow silks. You can't tell exactly what happened. No, you can't. And it's always a, a little bit of a problem with that slight dog leg going a mile and 16th on the wide. And if you're down inside and you don't break well, your subject 
back to the traffic in front of you, and you see right there that Grandpa Len just had to suck out of there and, and go back to last. Yeah, no, he, he had significant trouble early in the race, and it's not just that. And Listen, Grandpa Len is no superstar, but this was a performance that overall was a lot better than it looks on paper for a horse that finished sixth in here because he's taken out of position. He has the speed to put himself in the game. It's not as though he's a slow horse, and now you see his rider, Jose Lascano, who's just between a rock and a hard place. He's, he's, I think he's making the right move, wanting to get him a little bit in the game, but as it turns out, with all that trouble, he makes what turns out to be a premature move, but frankly, after the start, he had no chance anyway. No chance anyway, and I think another thing to consider here is the top three horses, the seven, five, and three, they're all getting inside trips in here, whereas Grandpa Len has to make this wide move, and Grandpa Len's going to put in a little bit better move, too. I mean, right here, really starts to pick it up a little bit to, you know, get within a couple lengths of the leaders, just a prolonged wide move after a slow break where all the horses that ran well ran toward the inside. No, I don't disagree. I think that's a very good point you're making about all the horses making inside moves, and that's something, and I think you, you saw it as well in watching and re-watching races for this week. It's amazing how many of these turf races, you see Grandpa Lenz right off the lead, how many of these turf races were just dominated, the first three positions by horses that were near the front frequently, but also had to be on the rail, and horses that had rail position used it to their advantage, even if they angled off late. Horses that tried to make wide runs on both courses seemed to be way up against it. And I like the fact that Grandpa Len kind of weakened a little bit in the stretch here. I think that's a, you know, a good thing for getting a better price next time out. He did the running you know, in the middle and, and late to middle part of the races here and just came up a little bit flat, but uh, you see the two, uh, the two horses pulling away from the field here that were up close to the lead and on the inside. Yeah, uh, listen, he obviously he didn't run well at the end, but his race is much better than it looks. And as we head towards Saratoga, we'll have a lot more turf racing up there as well. You're going to pay attention to the way these races were run and find horses that had some outside trips, whoever they may be. And I think that's something that will work in your favor as we head upstate. All right, let's take a look at the third race from June 16th. Now winners one allowance for three-year-olds. Enough mile on the 16th. Reload uh, gets in some trouble here at the start and uh, doesn't get much better after this. Yeah, this was not only was he incredibly unlucky to start, and, and, and listen, I like the winner of this race. So I, I remember I was the beneficiary of, <laughs> I would have done all right if he ran second if it was reversed order, but I was the beneficiary of this trouble. So there's no sour grapes here. If anything, I'm grateful. It's not just that Reload had that trouble at the start. It was a race that played to his strength because it ended up collapsing collapsing he got a very impatient ride uh, and it's it's listen it's a difficult thing we get in that trouble to start what do you do do you sit back and wait or do you get in the game in this case it was a, a decision that cost him the win and thinking of Mono 16th, you don't really need to rush up too much to, to get in the game. And and he's not rushing up right here, still, uh, you know, toward the back it's of the early. pack here, but uh, is going to make a big move in here. And it's just, you know, the, the, the eventual winner of the race is the six pens grand, who's second to last on the screen right now. There's just no reason why why uh, Reload should uh, loop this horse, make the, make the aggressive move outside. Just you know, sitting in behind and following uh, following Penn's Grand probably would have worked out better. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. If he had just been patient, but instead you see him, he sort of blows by Penn's Grant. And I know the rider in Penn's Grant's riding a little bit, but he's not asking that hard. And th th this is a race where you see three horses fighting it in front. I, I think it's hindsight is is twenty twenty, as they say. But this is a horse that really ran very well in here. Dynamic society. Yeah, dynamics theoretically in his favor, but getting left, making the wide premature move. Now Penn's Grant's hampered a little bit because he ends up having to go inside, and Reload is better off being outside, but Real is really improving for Suge McGay, and, and, and that's the mark of Suge, and a lot of good, very good trainers is their horses, they bring them along a little bit slowly, and they start to improve, and I'll tell you something, I don't know, I think we see Reload, could he, could he try to win an hour as a one, I'm sure he'd love to be in a race like the Curlin, I mean obviously they're a big race in Saratoga, and we're not saying he's a Travers horse, but you know what? There's room at the top for horses that can run, and Reload is a horse for Shug that can and very well may move forward a lot. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised to see this horse running in some good stakes races by the end of the summer up in Saratoga. Or even whether it's the Discovery we yeah. run later in the year. I mean, Shug's not. Shug is very patient, but Reload's a horse. And Pez Grant's okay, but Reload's a horse with real ability. Taking a look at Indy Dreaming now from the fourth race on June 16th. The special weight uh, Phillies and Mares going a mile on the 16th. First time on the grass for Indy Dreaming. Yeah, I, this is a horse that, that I kind of liked a little bit. And this was another situation where we were talking earlier about inside position. You look at this race. I mean, inside position just got you home in here. And it was another Shug McGay horse, a raise a flag, who came from a little farther back. Otherwise, the speeds were 2-3-4 here. 
Indy Dreaming is a horse that had speed in her ineffectual dirt races. Doesn't break that sharply from outside post at a mile 16th in the inner, and that's just that's just a nightmare. Yeah, I was a little surprised. I thought she'd be up closer <laughs> so to the lead here, uh, but she's coming from last, and uh, we'll, we'll slow eventually pace. make a, a big run into the slow pace here going wide. Yeah, listen, I, my feeling with Indy Dreaming is I don't know how good she is, and I'm not saying to people you should be betting on this horse, but I, I would say that at least she showed a little bit of life mm-hmm. as opposed to her race where she was effectively eased every time. She showed a little life. She had dynamics against her. I'm inclined to want to give her one more chance. I hear you. I hear you. I'm not a huge fan of hers. Uh, th- you know, th- think she still needs to improve a little bit, but this was definitely a step in the right direction. A big improvement over her two dirt races for sure, and we'll start to see her soon making the big sweeping move. It's another situation. I mean, pay attention to this race. You know, the horse who's on the lead ends up finish- finishing second. The horse who's on her flank ends up finishing third. The winner comes up the inside, and Indy Dreaming commences from blast to make this big wide, and this is another one of these big wide turn moves. She's moving three, four wide on the inner. The whole turn, she spins out five wide, as you'll see, top of the stretch. She's all the way in the far, far outside, and of course she flattens out. And from a dynamic standpoint, she had no prayer whatsoever. She ends up looking a lot worse than I think she is. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you in that respect. I think uh, in some ways, though, sometimes these horses that make those quick moves on the turn, I'm just not sure what, what you're going to get out of them. You know, obviously, if she breaks better next time out, she's up close to the lead. You don't have to make that kind of quick move to get in contention. You can kind of dull your speed out a little bit more. So, not sure where, not sure where she's going to, uh, you know, where she's going to finish in her next start. But certainly, it was a step in the right direction. And let Price be your guide on her. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm betting her. In other words, unless there's some, some monsters in the race, and I hear what you're saying because listen, all she did was make one brief, maybe eighth of a mile move. I just think she had no chance the way the race played mm-hmm. out. Okay, we'll get to the third race now from uh, June 17th in New York. Red Maiden special weight for Phillies and Mares a mile 16th down the Widener. Uh, yeah, we're going to look at a couple horses. I mean, melodramatically, who can't help herself and gets left every race she runs in until she gets over that. She'll never win a race. The gray is the one that Eric wants to focus on, always in my circle. Well, actually, both finish in a dead heat for a fourth uh, together <laughs> in, in this race here. Always in my circle going to end up getting a fairly good trip, I thought, in the early part of the race here. You're going to have a, a long shot uh, leader who kind of runs away a little bit early on at 85 to 1 to 3. Uh, Dixie Rocks, who's out in front here. So you want to be, you know, in this middle pack in here, maybe covered up a little bit, but the, the problem is when you get these kind of races where the leader runs off from everyone else and you get that big herd of horses in that second pack, you're going to get in some traffic issues. And not right now, but it's going to happen eventually with always in my circle. Yeah, the, the field a bunch. The, the, the winner and the second place finisher were also horses that came up the inside, made inside moves. Very good ride by Jose Lescano and Lady Yellowtail, getting her much more in the game earlier in this race than last time out, and it benefited her greatly in her second start. But I got a good ride by Arad Ortiz as well to finish second. Uh, always in my circle. This is really more, I, I don't have an opinion on her, to be honest with you, Eric, one way or the other. I thought she ran well in here. You know, as her first start back uh, off a layoff, uh, it was rained off the turf last year for a trainer, Dominic Chantino. I'll pause it right here. She's going to steady lose about a length and a half, maybe two lengths at the, at the most at this point in the race, but just continues to be in a, in a problem traffic pattern from this point on uh, throughout the race. And uh, just a horse that just I don't think ever really got a clear run from, him, from, from you know the turn home. She's right behind the eventual second place finisher, actually on that one's flank on the outside. And it's tough. It's, a, you know, finding position. She's there. The gray, the 11 horse is melodramatically makes this huge wide run. Don't forget, as Eric pointed out, all these horses took advantage of a, of a fairly rapid pace to collapse with that long shot leader. Uh, melodramatically, is going to continue to burn money until <coughs> Grand Motion figure out a way to get her to get out of the gate, in which case she might win. I'm sure it's very frustrating to him as well. Always in my circle, continues to have some traffic troubles. He continues to have some traffic troubles in the in the triangle there where you can't go inside, you can't go outside, you got a horse in front of you. And I just don't think that the uh, rider of uh, Always in My Circle, Junior Alvarado, really got a chance to ride her at, at any stage in the race. And here, even coming up the inside, has got a, a brief moment of, of clarity there, and you know, he's going to start to eventually run up on that front pack of horses. So I'm, I'm expecting. Expecting a, a better improvement uh, next time out, a better re- uh, effort next time out with some, uh, rent, you know, some improvement second off the layoff, considering maybe some traffic issues in this race. We've got about three weeks left until Saratoga, <coughs> so maybe it'll be here, maybe it'll be up there. Wherever it is, we appreciate your help and your comments. Trips and traps at nyrink.com. Thanks for watching.